Hi there. Uh, this project was a collaborative project with myself and Tom Lanini is a reading scientist at UC Davis. Karen Klonsky sitting back there is uh, Aggie Conmesh also from UC Davis. And Chris Frieder is the grower. And funding was provided by initially by the California Pear Advisory Board and then the last two years of the project were funded by the Organic Farm and Research Foundation based in California. So this was a simple experiment uh, in which it was started in October 2008. It's a uniform boss block, golden, rus golden russet boss, spaced five and a half meters between rows and three meters between trees, uh, four, uh, 18 by 10 uh, feet, planted in 2001, so seven-year-old when we started. Uh, randomized complete block design with seven treatments and five replications. And the plot size was six trees per rep. So this is the whole experiment. And eat, this is six trees with the four trees generally what we took the data off of. And these are all the treatments in each row. So these are the treatments. And the first four are the standard, the grower standard, which was in row mowing. It's cheap. It works pretty well. And in the first treatment, there was no additional fertilizer put on for three years. In the second, treatment, it was manure at the low rate, about four and a half or five metric tons per acre, um, or, or about two tons, two to three tons per acre, I'm oh, sorry, four to five, four and a half to five metric tons per hectare. Uh, third one was double that rate, so um, the second one, the second manure treatment is always double the first one, uh, low and high rate. And then we use feather meal, and so the feather meal, the nitrogen amount in this one was intended to be the same or thereabouts as, as the low rate manure, okay? So then the uh, treatments five, six, and seven used all high rate manure, and then we used landscape fabric, and wood chips as another treatment, and herbicide strip. Herbicide, yes, organic herbicide, acetic acid was usually used, vinegar, as well as uh, green match at times also. So this is the grower standard. It's an in-row mower, and it has a, a bar here that pushes it out of the way from the tree as well as the sprinklers. Um, it worked pretty well. It worked very well. It sometimes damaged the tree when it didn't uh, when it didn't go away. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the other thing is, voles, meadow mice, love the, the grass, and so they'll feed on the trunks. So in the third year of the project, he used. Uh, a weed badger, which was the same uh, implement, just a, a weed badger with the tines to, to shallow the cultivate instead of the mower. Uh, the organic herbicide, you can see, helped a little. It's about intermediate, didn't do that good of a job, but it, it did uh, suppress the weed growth some. Uh, landscape fabric was lumite, it was a three foot strip, and then on the other side, three foot also, and it overlapped. So we had to cut the uh, little uh, tree holes out in order to put them to overlap. Uh, and then wood chips, about uh, four inches, four to six inches deep, quite a thick layer, um, each year applied in the spring. Uh, so these are the results, and there were no significant differences in these factors, these uh, parameters, yields, and so these are metric tons per hectare, and you can see the third year was very high yield, uh, which has an effect, and I'll show you that later, but also the fruit diameters, this average fruit diameters was much lower on the third year, but no differences in those, okay? And I expect we would have seen some differences if we carried it out another two or three years. No difference in cross trunk sectional area or in the leaf potassium, calcium, or magnesium content. So, uh, then looking at what we did see differences in, in the control of weeds, and you can see the fabric and wood chips here had very good control of the weeds. And on the fabric, the weeds that did grow were mostly on top on the duff, on the leaf debris and so on. And, and the roots really didn't penetrate much through the fabric. So it wasn't a competition problem. And in the wood chips, we did get uh, Bermuda grass and a couple of other grasses that started to invade. The herbicide treatment was sort of intermediate. And then this is the uh, mowing. Obviously no weed control in the mowing. So what did we see in terms of nitrate, nitrogen content in the soil? 
This is the last year, 2011, and this is parts per million. And we saw, of course, the no fertilizer started to see a decline in the soil nitrate content. Uh, not much difference in, in the others. <clears throat> and at the deeper depths, 30 to 60 centimeters, we saw that feather meal was quite high. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I guess it, it, it uh, moves down through the soil, um, or uh, it's the nitrogen is released fairly quickly from it. Uh, what about the leaf nitrogen content? Um, really not a lot of difference, but we did see that the untreated no fertilizer was less. And this, is, this line is 2.2%, which is the threshold for you don't want to go below that. It's become deficient. And so most of them were right on the border. And this is one of the problems, of course, with our giant tree fruit production, adding enough fertilizer to be able to keep the nitrogen levels up. Um, tend to see a little higher in the fabric. I'm uh, not sure if that's that real. But there was a step increase with the low rate of manure and a slight increase with the higher rate of manure. Uh, this was the last year, so we had the real high yield, low fruit size. And then we saw the nitrogen levels in the leaves drop down. All of them were at or very uh, or lower than the threshold. So they were becoming deficient. And yet there were still no differences in yield. Okay, so our phosphorus content, um, we did see that the wood chips had slightly higher, well, significantly higher phosphorus content parts per million. And then also at the 0 to 30 centimeter as well as the 30 to 60 centimeter, um, it was higher. Uh, for, a look at the phosphorus content of the untreated as well as the feather meal. No phosphorus in feather meal, so if you are only applying nitrogen, you're going to start running short on other nutrients. And the same, similar at the low, uh, lower depth also. Uh, and then uh, in terms of leaf phosphorus content, we did see significantly higher levels in the, uh, in the wood chips, but only higher than a couple of other treatments. So I didn't include it. Uh, so, uh, soil potassium content, this is only the 0 to 30 centimeter we saw a significant increase in the uh, wood chip treatment. But no differences in leaf content. Uh, pH, we noticed that uh, feather meal did have a decline in pH from about 6.7 down to 6.4. So uh, it definitely resulted in a lower pH. Organic matter content, no surprise, we did see that both at, at both depths, or, uh, the wood chips did lead to higher organic matter content. We didn't look at soil biology. <coughs> so one of the problems, of course, with organic management is bowls, and we have weeds. So we looked at how many holes there were per six trees, and that's only on one side. So we're seeing in the 30 to 35 holes per six trees on one side. That's a lot of holes. But they weren't really doing a lot of damage to the trees, none that we could see. Uh, so this is, uh, this is 2009, and we saw a similar trend in 2010. A lot of voles here. Wood chips had very few vol holes, okay? But we did see um, tunnels in the fabric. So where you have landscape fabric, there aren't going to be holes. They just have the little runways. And it's on top of the ground. So we counted the runways. So this is, this is not real accurate. Okay, because they're, they're not making holes, they're just crawling through it. They love the environment under the fabric. Uh, um, so then in the last year of the study, we, did, we looked at vole damage and found that, uh, that the fabric did have the highest percent, although we didn't do statistics because it was only, this is how many trees had damage and couldn't really do statistics on it. But percent, about a third of the trees in that treatment had some sort of damage. But it wasn't serious damage, it was some sort of chewing. And generally not very much chewing, but there was more in the fabric, which, which is expected if you've ever seen a young orchard planted with a fabric, and then there's uh, pasture or weeds nearby, you're going to have some serious bolt damage. OK, so what about the cost of these materials? Um, you can see one right here, the wood chips. 
very expensive, at least at the rate that we apply them, about four to six inches, four inches deep is what this is based on once a year. Uh, for the material and for spreading, and we used a spreader, a wood chip spreader, borrowed from a blueberry grower. Um, and herbicide was also very expensive, but nowhere near the wood chips. And then the, uh, the fabric, it's expensive initially, but if it lasts eight years, then you're going to amortize that cost over eight years. And it ends up being very similar to the cost of mowing alone. And uh, uh, this is the fertility program, of course, no fertilizer is zero. Then there's the low rate, high rate. And then feather meal is more expensive than both of those. But there's a lot of times where growers aren't able to get manure because it's just not available. So a lot of growers in our area who are organic use feather meal. It's, it's pelleted, easy to apply. And then the cost of, uh, total cost of both programs is shown here. Obviously, the, uh, weed, the uh, wood chips are the highest and so on. And so this, you might say, okay, well this is your best treatment, let's just go with mowing and no fertilizer. Eventually the trees are going to run out of nitrogen and uh, you're going to need to fertilize. But over three years, you know, no difference. Okay, I'll take any questions if you have any. Yes? So no real rodent problems? The only rodent problem was the hole. Yeah. But, but how serious was that? Well, it did seem to be a serious problem. These trunks were a pretty good size. Um, and, but I've seen them take down big trees anyway. But um, there was damage, it was just very little. Yeah. Does yeah. the timing of uh, fertilizer or fertility application, is that important at all? Like spring versus fall, we're dealing with perennial plants, you know, promoting vegetative growth in the spring versus root growth and and storage and well, yeah, good question. Because the nutrients are fairly slow release, you know, it's not as important. Normally, with conventional fertilizers, they're applying in the in the mid spring and the late winter, early summer time period, uh, because the nutrients are the nitrogen especially is available right then. But much slower release with manures and, and feather meal. So I don't think the timing is that important. But we did tend to fertilize in the spring. Initially it was the fall, but then uh, I kind of went along with the grower and we did it in the spring. There was another question back there. Did you consider to fill your manure into the soil and your water? I well, didn't understand if you knew yeah. that. If so, was, I also, uh, if that was uh, composted manure, stabilized, and uh, with the level of organic material? It was, it was poultry manure, not composted. Uh, I, I went along with what the grower was applying. He was wanting to get as much nitrogen on as he could quickly, compost, much slower release of nitrogen. And he didn't, nobody uses tillage in the, in, with the pears in this area, in the Sacramento area. So they just leave it on top of the soil surface and then the irrigation theoretically brings it down. But don't you believe that it's much better to till? Well, I know. It's to increase organic material there. I think it's not too high in Sacramento. The what? Is it? The organic uh, Actually, there's about four percent nitrogen. I'm um, so four percent organic matter in the soil. It's pretty high. Yeah. Those are the nuts. Uh, it's in the delta areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as far as uh, you know, I'm trying to get back to your original question. Yeah, to till. Oh yeah, it's a no-till system. They don't till. Obviously, when you apply it, it smells really bad. So, you know, it drives people away. It's really bad smell. Uh, so you're losing a lot of that nitrogen to the air. I, I fully agree. Uh, but it's a no-tell system, so they didn't want to tell. So I didn't either. Thank you. Okay. Uh, quick question. Oh, yeah. So the bulls can they be used to help uh, reduce the growth of the <laughs> Possibly so, but they didn't seem to have an effect. They didn't. The bulls, you said? Yes. Yeah. No effect. No effect. Well, because the, the damage was minor. They were chewing. We have to look pretty close to see damage. 